I welcome you back to the 11th hour today. This is a special day, and it's, going, it's always a special day when we can gather together right here around God's Word. Now, Lord, I ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, that we can learn your Word together as a family. And I give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before we do anything else today, I want to go over to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, and we want to see what God is talking about right here. I, I want to say some things that will probably sound a lot different today, but in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verse 16 through 23, now let's look at that just a moment and watch this. It says, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Watch this next verse. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now look back at that verse uh, 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now notice this. It said that the eyes of your understanding. You know, eyes, everybody has eyes, uh, you know, but the thing is is that not many see. Most people just look. Most people never see. They just look, you know. And so the 12 spies went in to spy Jericho. And 10 of them looked, but two of them saw. And so seeing and looking is two different things. And so, you know, Jesus asked the scribe, he said, uh, he's, or the lawyer, he said, the lawyer said, how, how do I inherit eternal life? He said, well, what's written in the scripture? How do you read it? So that's perception. What do you get out of that? And Jesus told what he got out of it. And the other guy told what he got out of it. Now, perception is the world the man lives in. That's what men live in. Whatever you perceive to be reality is where you will live. Now, the Lord started talking to me yesterday and then again early this morning about all of this. And I want you to listen to these words, and I'm going to get into something here. Um. The Lord spoke this phrase to me, starving in the land of abundance. Starving in the land of abundance. Starving in the land of abundance cannot be done apart from the political. It cannot be done as far as in nations go apart from the political. And even in the spirit, Satan is a political devil. Satan is a legalistic devil. And that's why he operates in politics like he does, because politics govern the affairs of men. So when you, when you start looking at all of this and you see this, that it cannot be done, starving in the land of, an, of abundance cannot be done apart from the political. Only government can corral abundance and only trickle to the people small amounts of food, money, and supply. There are telltale signs of this when they start doing this. Uh, in our day, it would begin to show up in the land of abundance when things like gas prices go through the roof. Food shortages, they won't let the food come in on ships and things like that because of government regulations. So you're looking at, at these things and you start seeing these signs and then you see stock markets trading higher than ever or as high as ever, but yet people are starving in the middle of all this abundance. This is because political is at work. 
There's a devil in the political system that's working here. Amen. Well, now, when you see things like this happening, you know there's a political agenda happening. It takes a coordinated effort to bring such things to pass. For instance, the government of the United States has separation of powers, executive, legislation, judicial. Each is to balance the other. Now, to starve the land of abundance or to starve in the land of abundance, there must be a manipulative or a manipulating of those powers. And somehow, in some way, purposes uh, of the authorities start getting redefined. <clears throat> so if you're to stay with me, I'll make sense to you in a minute. That in our government, in the United States government, there's three branches of government, executive, legislative, judicial. And in order, those are actually given to balance each other so that one don't overreach the other. And so because it's supposed to be a government for the people, you know, and by the people and of the people. So you have these. So in order to starve someone in a land of abundance here, there must be a manipulation of those three powers. You have to manipulate it somehow. You have to start making things appear as something else. It can't be what, you've, what you see. It can't be what you know because this nation has a covenant with God. Israel has a covenant with God. That's why they won't go away. You know, people say, well, we're just going to get rid of Israel. Well, you will never do that. And it will never happen. God made a covenant with Abraham to give him the land forever. And so it's his forever. And when the millennial reign takes place, it will be more of it that other people have illegally. But you'll never get rid of Israel because Israel went away 2,000 years and came back. No other nation's ever done that. No one's ever done that. But yet they did. And they can grow the best fruit, the best food out of rocks almost. It just looks like rocks. And they're growing all this lush food. And you could go over into Israel and see as sometimes you just see it'll be lush green and then just stop and be desert when it crosses a border somewhere. Well, this is because of a blessing of abundance, a blessing of the Lord. And no matter how many they bring in to Israel, they keep flying Jews into Israel. There's always more than enough. It just produces well, America, Israel was created because God loved Israel. America was created because America loved God. And so they're the two nations created on the love of God. And America is blessed. This nation is blessed with so much. They use our food to burn for fuel. They use it for this. They use it for that. And I, I know of people, they go and pay them. The government will come and pay them to let their crops rot in the field. Now you think about that, and still we have a, an abundance. They try to block it up in the Suez Canal to keep it from going around the world, and a miracle happens, and here it all comes again. They try to hold it up off the coast of California, and yet still we have an abundance. No matter what happens, we have an abundance. So in order to starve in a land like this, then the, the manipulation of three branches of government must take place. I feel like I'm alone up here, but, I, but I'm not alone. The Lord is with me. Now watch this. It was a dark day for Satan when America declared its independence. Notice what the great Declaration of Freedom declared. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, listen to this first part. 
It says, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them to another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. To assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. America assumed itself among the nations of the earth, the separate and equal station to bring the laws of nature and of nature's God into the world. The world cannot be taken over without dealing with America because it was God gave the, the whole foundation of it, and it was to, us, to put itself in the middle of all these powers. And you cannot overthrow the world. The one world government cannot take place without dealing with this nation. And they're finding it hard. So they had to try to do something very different. And I'm going to try to tell you what that is. Now, it's because of this covenant and the way it's declared that makes America uh, the seat and center of supernatural abundance. Satan cannot take over until prosperity can be destroyed. Only then can the Lord of filth, the God of the dunghill, rule. Remember, it's the love of money that's the root of all evil, not money. Prosperity must be controlled in order for the Lord of the maggot to rule. Starving in the land of abundance is not easily done. It has to be engineered. And it, and it takes uh, a plan, a coordinated effort from the powers that be to bring it to pass. Now, I'm going to get to what I'm going to talk about. There must be an elaborate plan for this. It must be done with illusion. Illusion. It must be done in a way that it creates an illusion of, of freedom uh, and so forth that does not interfere with the great declaration and, and does not appear to in the Constitution in the sight of the people because if not, they would rise up and become wise to the cunning. So it has to be done in an illusion. Now, I want to show you this. It has to be done by the enemy at any cost. Now, this illusion is, uh, well, let me define illusion. A thing that is or is likely to be wrongly perceived or interrupted by the senses or interpreted by the senses. A deceptive appearance or impression, a false idea or belief. Now, a psychological concept of illusion is defined as process in, involving an interpretation or interaction of logical and uh, Roxanne, help me pronounce this, empirical, is that right? And empirical considerations. A common usage suggests that an illusion is a discrepancy between one's awareness and some stimulus. So it is an, a process involving an interaction of logical and empirical considerations. Okay, logical is based on facts. Empirical evidence is based on experience. So this is an interaction with these two things. An illusion is done by creating a discrepancy between what you're aware of and, what's, and some stimulus that's been brought into your being. It works like this. It disrupts everything you know. There has to be an interaction with both logical and empirical 
and you look at it and what you're aware of, I see this, and some stimulus brought in, and it has to get in between these two things, and it begins to create an illusion. For example, the Democrat Party thought for years to take over this whole thing, but they couldn't do it out in the open because they are wicked. They're evil and they're wicked. If you describe to a Democrat what they believe, they will tell you they're not a Democrat. If you just don't tell them what you're describing, just say, do you believe this, 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 this? They'll say no. Then they, you tell them your party believes all of this. And so you begin to talk to them, and they don't believe what they vote for. Oh, that did it right there, didn't it? That word. Uh, so anyway, they don't believe what they wrote down on a piece of paper and dropped in a thing. They don't believe that. Now, how are they going to perpetrate evil without appearing to violate the great declaration or the Constitution? How could they do this? Okay, here's how they do it. They create an illusion. There has to be an illusion. So how is the illusion done? An illusion is this, they will take, grab the seat of power, but they have to make you think that you're still in control of everything going on by your voice because it's of the people, by the people, for the people. And so by your voice and your actions that you're still in control of all this, how are they going to do that while they make the power plays behind the scene? They do this by having another party that appears to be on your side. But actually, when it comes down to the power uh, moves, they're on the same page as the other place. So then you have an illusion of freedom. And they're standing there saying, we're fighting for you. We're fighting for you. We're doing this. Man, we're going to stand up. Oh, yeah, we got to fight. We got to fight. We got to fight. And in a backroom deal, they throw the cards out across the table and go ahead and make the deal and then make you think you fought for it but lost it. But at least you had a chance to fight for it. And so, therefore, you just get mad at a bunch of other people that never really wrote their thing on a piece of paper and dropped it in a box. They never even did it. So it's an illusion of freedom. So the Republican Party became the illusion of freedom for the Democrat Party. Now, how does an illusion work? How do they bring? Well, they give themselves away. For three or four weeks ago, there was no way that the Senate would not turn over to to conservatives. There was no way. They said there's no way they're going to maintain either place. They're so wicked. They've done such a bad job. We're going to sweep it all. And then suddenly you have a trained elephant like McConnell. Mitch McConnell comes out on the scene and says, it looks like we're going to lose the Senate. Looks like we're going to lose it. When did we lose it, Mitch? When you threw an ace out on the table. That's when it happened in that back room over there. And so everybody got what they wanted, and then they can come back out to the American people and say, we're fighting for you, we're fighting for you, we're fighting for you. And all the time the deal was made over here. That's what happened. The deal for the Senate has already been made. You do know that, right? That's why he said that. It's already been decided that the Senate would go back to the Democrats because they must maintain power and keep their trained elephants as an illusion. I know, it's, ah, Brother Robin, you're just preaching on politics. No, I'm about to preach on something else entirely, and I'm talking about a deception that the enemy said that Scripture says if it was possible, he would fool the very elect. Don't look at people that stand up there and say, we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting, we're fighting. And then all of a sudden they come out and they know there's no, it was impossible to lose it. 
There was no way we could lose it. Then why did this big rope, this big trained elephant stand there and say, it looks like we can't hold it anymore. It's so much, the illusion is so deep and so strong that they think the American people are stupid aardvarks somewhere. They just ain't got no sense at all. Spend our time just... It was given away. Now, whether they can bring their backroom deal to pass or not, but it makes it look like you get out there and you write your name on this and drop it in a box. Oh, that if it was like that again, really, where you wrote it down and put it in a box. But you, you know what I'm trying to say. If not, then these, these trained illusionists on all social media will cut it off because that's their job. They're dealing in anecdotal perception. And that's how they propagate the illusion. All the social medias have one narrative, one narrative, control the narrative, the narrative, the narrative. Say a few key words and they cut you off. Well, you know what? Somebody, uh, somebody just the other day in the FBI found out that don't work. And Big Face threw him to the, to the wolves. So here you have all of this, and, and I have to talk about writing it down, drop it in a box, writing it down, drop it in a box, because their algorithm's too stupid to pick that up. Write it down, drop it in a box, write it down, drop it in a box. And they make you think that yours, writing yours down, dropping it in a box is, is working. It's already been decided. Now that's where we are. That's where we are. It's in the it's in perception and illusion. Well, you're upset, Brother Robin. I'm only mad at the devil. I'm mad at the devil because he's seeking to do something before he should be able to do it. And the people around the world, they say, why are they looking at America? Because America has to be dealt with before anything else can be seized. It must be. And so now you've got all these traitors and the uh, and all these political hierarchies that are just selling it out. I told you they traded Roe v. Wade for gun control. I, I knew it in the spirit. I told you it would happen, and it happened. I told you the other day, if you'll remember, I said, in the three-letter law enforcement agencies, there will be three. Well, one just resigned and made the news. Wonder who the other two will be and what three-letter agency will he come out of or she. This is all just a big illusion. I remember being in Florida one time at a big faith and freedom rally, and it was a big deal down there. It was a big swanky event. And Robin and I went, and I was sitting at a table, and, and uh, I watched all the the big elephants come out on stage. I mean, I'm talking about all of them. Seemed like anybody who was somebody was there. And they came out there, and uh, I saw the vice president come out. He came out, his wife, and he talked about Jesus. And then I saw Ted Cruz come out. He preached some. And then I saw the lieutenant governor from North Carolina come out and just turn the place up on its head. And then... Then I watched uh, Lindsey Graham walk out and more or less tell everybody Christians were hypocrites. And then when he stood there and then he started saying, we got to fight, got to fight, got to fight, got to fight. Somebody just, you could hear it in the room. How? Well, you got to write your, you got to write your decision down and throw it in a box. You understand? And then I just said out loud at the table, I said, we did that. Eighty million of us did that. I said, would somebody address the elephant in the room? Why don't you fix the problem? Well, I know there were some shenanigans went on. 
Yeah, because you were the shanty that did it. You and your buddies. You don't fool. Now listen, you're, oh, brother Robin, you're, just, you're, just, uh, you're just in the flesh talking. Well, I'm in the flesh, but I'm not just talking out of my flesh. We have got to wake up to the fact we're looking at an illusion here. It's just an illusion. And you've got two parties. One are the illusionist and the other is the power. The power is able to start wars, proxy wars. They're able to get rid of real officials that really, that really should be there. They're able to manipulate this, get rid of them. They can do it all because the illusionist over here will make it where it looks right. They can go and start wars in Ukraine, and the illusion is painted as a great picture. But the people on the ground over there preaching, the evangelists that are there are saying they're killing their own people over here. But nobody speaks of this. They tried to drag a wild bear into their circus. It didn't work. And they're pushing things. Folks, listen to me. I just kind of got, you know, I, I, I realize I get up in the air about it sometimes. But what they did is they're trying to bring in a one world government. They're trying to bring in the mark of the beast. Now the mark of the beast is not just for what they call Bible thumpers talking about it. Because they gave themselves away when they put Noah Harari on in front of the camera. And he started talking about why do we need so many humans? Why do we need these humans? Humans are hackable animals, he said. And they've got plans and show his plans of putting a chip inside a baby in the womb and feeding it certain information. Then he says we will create cyborgs. This is the men that control the wealth of the world. They're talking about it. Obama calls him the prophet. Klaus Schwab calls him the prophet. They all call him a prophet. When you refer to a prophet, you have to be talking about a spiritual agenda. You're dealing with a divine spiritual something. He always brings God into the equation. Have you noticed this? He comes on the scene and he, he says all the God of the Bible managed to create was tomatoes, trees, giraffes, and humans. Only organic life. He never said there wasn't a God. He just said all he managed to create. That's a spirit talking who knows God. But when you ask this guy about Jesus rising from the dead, he said it's fake news. Now, wait a minute. Well, how does that fit the scripture? The devils know there's one God and they tremble. But a demon spirit cannot say Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. So he admits to the God of the Bible, and then he pinpoints it and says it's the God of the Hebrew Bible. But he cannot admit that Jesus rose from the dead. So you're looking at someone they call the prophet. He's talking about creating half men, half machines. He's talking about not looking to the God above the clouds, but below the clouds. He said in the vision year, mm -mm -mm. you understand what I'm saying? The glasses year, the mm -mm -mm -mm. 2020. He said in that year, men agreed to be monitored or surveyed under the skin. What's he talking about? And now you're actually looking at the WEF standing up, declaring this to be so. 
that we're going to have to create a new race. We're going to have to do a new thing. And we're going beyond the God of the Bible. And they call him the prophet. And, they're, and, and all of these entities coming together, if they didn't want you to know it's the mark of the beast, they should have never put Harari out front because he's a false prophet. Now, if you people that call me a false prophet, call these other prophets false prophet, look at Noah Harari and you'll see a false prophet. Why don't you direct your attentions towards something that, that really can help? He's the false prophet, and he wants to be the false prophet. So this is an illusion to bring this about. Everything is in illusion mode right now. We have to get out of, of sleight of hand. We have to get out of that. We have to get out of illusion. We must begin to deal with the absolute truth. And we have to start saying the truth. And our great declaration was written on the truth. It was, it was written from sermons that had been preached up to that time. So this time of illusion, we have to see through that. We must see through it. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I don't know exactly yet what it means, but I heard the Lord say this to me. He said, the tables of the money changers have to be overturned. They have to be overturned now. So, I'll close with this. In Isaiah 63, this is what's about to happen. And you just mark it down and remember this day. In Isaiah 63, verse 1 through 6, this is what it says. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Edom means red. Red. The land of the red, in other words. With died or grieved or grievous garments from Bozrah. Bozrah means treachery and deception. It says a prophet is talking to the master himself, to Jesus himself. And the prophet, Isaiah, is always, he's the prophet that always asks questions. He asks questions. He's, he's amazing. He asks, how did you fall from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? He asks questions here. He's always asking questions. And the Lord is always giving him the answer. And he says, who is this coming from Edom? From the land of the red, with garments, with grieved clothing of treachery and deception. Who is this that would come from the red and he's grieved with treachery and deception? He says this, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. And then the Lord answers, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. I speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Now I want you to think about that. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Suddenly I saw in my spirit Harari sitting there with his tongue consuming in his mouth. All of these people screaming and crying with these demonic spirits as the lion approaches. For suddenly their wisdom looks like tattered old garments that of, 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 of childish men sitting there 
trying to contend with the Almighty, trying to rise above his stature. And Klaus Schwab standing there like something out of a movie, trying to tell people they know better about your life than you do. They know better about this than you do. Harari standing over there, trying to talk educated, saying I'm going beyond the God of the Bible. We're talking about a pile of dirt with a tongue talking and air coming into his lungs, saying he's going beyond the one who created that organic life. We're talking about a man sitting there. If diarrhea hit him all at once, he would embarrass himself in front of a camera. And yet he's going to go beyond the God of the Bible. Let's get this thing in perspective. You're a pile of dirt talking, and God is the one who raked the dirt together and breathed on it and gave you life to start with. And what kind of prophet are you? A prophet of technology? You're a prophet that tells what this keyboard will do? You might know every chip and board in a keyboard, but you can't do what Robin can do when she walks up behind it and puts anointed fingers on those keys and starts playing sounds out of her spirit. You can't do that. Let's put it in perspective. False prophet. And so I suddenly saw these tattered clothes and these people just sitting there, dumbed down. When the God Isaiah was speaking to arises and starts coming this direction. Do you really think he is going to abandon his people? Do you really think that he's going to, he's already finished with us or like he's some man and he's disappointed in his people? If he was disappointed in his people, he wouldn't be any bigger than his people. He's coming to rescue them. You cannot overcome the covenant made with our forefathers in this nation. You can't overcome the covenant promised in the blood oath that he swore when he shed his own blood on the cross. Scream, demon, scream. Go ahead and scream. For Jesus on the cross dealt with the bulls of Bashan. He dealt with the spirits of Goliath. That means he dealt with the, with the, with the, the cross breeding of genetics. He dealt with all of that on the cross. And when he did, he defeated them all. He went into hell where you had your great greatest power and yet on, after three days and nights the Holy Ghost stormed into that pit and raised the beloved up from the dead and used his own words to do it with. So scream demon, scream out of Harari, scream out, scream out of these people because the lion approaches and he's coming. He says, where are you coming? <clears throat> Isaiah, the prophet, for the people did their job. This is between a prophet and, and God. And all it takes is one prophet who won't shut up, just one. And he'll answer the question and he'll keep coming. And he will come if just one, only Isaiah is talking to him here. It only takes one. And he says this, and you think, yes, I will, Lord. And you, and the, the W-E-F, the WEF, you think you can stand up with people like Jane Goodall behind you with her leg crossed. We need to go back to 500 years ago when the population was what, Jane, what? 500 million. Oh, that's what the Georgia Guidestones had on them. Never let the population get over 500 million. Couple that with Harari saying, we don't need humans. Well, we don't need so many humans. Put all that together and you're talking about they're trying, they're going to have a plan to kill 7 billion people. Put that in perspective. And you see all these demons, they've taken the stage. They think they've got it under control this time. 
You got CERN simulating sex acts uh, inside. They're dedicating their tunnels while fallen angels come down and women and, and men in chains being pulled along in wagons coming up out of their Gothard tunnel and coming up out of there. And you've got the prime ministers of different nations watching with their suits and ties clapping as some unclean fallen demon is doing all this in front of them. What are you clapping for, you corrupted pile of dirt? What are you clapping for? Because humans are in chains and a demon has come down and you see women with women and all of this. Is this what you're clapping for? And then they move them up, give them a hot dog or two, move them up on an outside stand, and then march everybody up out of hell and get them up there on a platform. And suddenly a demonic spirit hits them, and they all start taking off their orange prison jumpsuits and down into their underwear and start flaunting themselves all over the stage while the people in suits and ties are sitting up there in glee like this. What are you clapping for? What are they clapping for? While others are climbing a glass wall trying to break out this goat man that was down under the pit, then suddenly he comes out on the scene. And when he does, they put shrouds on people and they die. And then three big-headed men stand and bow to him. And this is the dedication of their tunnel that they open dimensions and bring demonic spirits out from the other side. And you think all of this don't fit together? Yes, it does. And they know it does. And it's on the temple of Apollo where Revelation 9 says the bottomless pit is open and they have a king over the demons that come out of it and his name is Apollyon. And they built it on the temple of Apollo. And they put the God of destruction, Shiva, the Hindu God of destruction, outside their door. And they set it on the, on the table of the World Health Organization. And they all this Shiva always seems to show up. Then they put Obama as Shiva on Newsweek in 2010. And they do all of this, and you think all of this is not connected? And now Harari saying, we, uh, we need to get rid of so many humans. We don't need all these humans anymore. Well, what are you, Jack? Are you a human? Maybe not. Maybe that's why he always refers to people as humans. But it's an illusion and no one sees the illusion while the government stand up and you have a jackal look at the camera. A jackal trying to smile. Well, behold, jackal, the lion comes. Behold, the lion approaches. Who is he? The prophet asked. So I will ask, who is this that cometh from the land of the red, agitated and grieved with treachery and deception. Who is this? Who is this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength? Can you imagine coming in glory, traveling in the greatness of his own strength? Who is this, the prophet asked. The answer comes, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. The prophet asked, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Why are you red in your apparel? How come your clothes are red? It looks like someone stomping grapes and spraying the blood of the grape all over your clothes. Who, uh, you who speaks in righteousness, mighty to save, why are your clothes so blood red? And he answers, I have trodden the winepress alone. And of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. 
and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment for the day of vengeance. Listen to what he says. The day of vengeance is in mine heart. And the year of my redeemed has come. The day of vengeance. What is vengeance? It's recompense. It's, it's harvest for seed sown. Wait a minute. He's trampling the wicked people like those who tread the grapes. For the day of harvest has come to him. What would be the, where was the seed sown? They triggered it at the WEF. When one said we need to go back to 500 million and the other said why do we need so many. They, they, uh, they had made their plans and their plans on slaughtering 7 million, a billion people in the earth. And when they made this idea, this plan, and they did things to the human body. They did things to the human body that some say will not even live past three to five years. They sowed the seed to be trampled in a harvest. I, I don't know if anybody's hearing me or not. I, I, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm in this fortress alone just, just standing here yelling. Maybe that's what it is. I'm telling you something. This is a seed sown. When you see vengeance, seed was sown. And they sowed it when they made the plans to kill. You say, oh, could they have really done that? Why say we don't need so many humans? His first words, we don't need any. Well, who is he? Makes you wonder. Then it's something else. It's a spirit talking. And then somebody else, and then somebody else on the forum, we need to go back to 500 years ago. Well, you're going to have to kill 7 billion people to do it. Do you think they care? No, when they broke the goat man out, put shrouds on them, let them die. Have three big headed men bow. And so you have all of this coming on. <clears throat> and they sowed the seed for this. And the scripture says the day will come when a third of, the, of men will die in the earth. They're actually speaking of this. Brother, you're talking mighty bold. I don't have time to talk mighty timid. And, uh, and your children and your grandchildren don't need a mouse speaking. Did you notice that? I'll leave that out there for you to ponder. They don't need a mouse talking to them. They need a lion. Who is this that comes? I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art you come with your apparel and your garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? How come your garments are, sp are sp uh, splattered and, and covered in blood, the blood of the grape? He said, For I've trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. Those who made themselves enemies to him. None with him. He said, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance of harvest is in mine heart and the year of my redeemed is come. Did you really think the lion of the tribe of Judah would leave us alone? Did you really think that we would be abandoned by our God? I'm talking to these wicked people right now. Did you really think that, Harari? Did you really think that, old Klaus? Did you really think this? Did you really think you could take people and set up your little forum and decide to destroy God's people? Fool. 
you will now face the lion. You will face the lion. Verse 5, And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. I am going to bring it down and show you it's earthly, nothing else. Hallelujah. Well, I know it kind of started different. It went wild for a while, and it came back to this scripture. For the time of the lion has been triggered. And men that are not with him. Why, why, what's going on? He is grieved. Watch. With the land of the red. He's grieved. With the illusion party. He's grieved with the land of the red. He's grieved with their treachery and deception. Well, I thought they were with us. Only about eight. Majority is with them. And they are their strength. They're their illusion to control the people while they actually run everything else. And if the people don't see through it, instead of screaming to get rid of this one on the left and this one on the left and this one on the left, they're not going to. If they, if they replace Pelosi with Schiff, what have you gained? I mean, what in the world is, uh, you just went from the, you know, the uh, what is it the fat to the the vat to the fryer i mean you you have you have just got worse but if you want your voice to count start yelling for trained elephants to be removed get them out of the way start calling for them to be replaced they absolutely are not expecting you to see through this illusion well you know, brother, you just didn't know. I'm telling you the truth. Start speaking for them to be replaced and get people that are believers to run in their place and tell them, we're going to go ahead and do a write-in. And let's see how your dominion works out. Authority, dominion. Anybody get it? Because it's hard to, to handle this. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, he's coming, and he's grieved with it. And men with paper tongues that are prophesying, and men like that that are prophesying. I, I will, Lord, I'll read that to them. I, I'll go ahead and do that. I gave a prophetic word on Church International Sunday, and the Lord impressed me to read this again. And I, this was on August 28, 2022. I want you to listen close what the Lord said now. He said, does a war come silent? Nay, says the Lord. A war they thought would come silent will not. He says, a slip of a finger and all the world will know. He said, did you think the evil would be allowed to go on forever? Did you think these men were more than men? For theirs are the tongues that will consume away in their mouths. An accident? Yes, an accident. And the world will know. For the, for the time of their evil reign has been weighed. 
the time will now come or will come to a close. The seed is planted and the and the harvest comes. Between when the seed is planted and the harvest coming is when men faint. If it's good seed or bad, but their seed has now been weighed and has come to an end, says the Lord. Then he starts talking to me about other things, about, but all connected. But then he comes down here, and listen to this. He said the sovereign nations are in trouble now. And then he starts talking to the prophets. He said, you, my prophets, are the voice of the declaration of independence, and I am the might of the Constitution. He said, you are the eagle, and I am the lion. And and your sacrifice will benefit all men. Then he says, you who did not stand, retreat to your caves quickly. Do not remain in the open field of battle, thinking to change my opinion of what I have set to do. Get to your places of safety, O ye prophets that did not stand, lest you be consumed. On the field of battle, says the Lord. So he tells the prophets that didn't stand, get to your caves, get to a place of safety. Why? He wants to spare them. For when the lion runs across the battlefield, those who stand in his opposition are those he's treading upon. So he said, all the prophets that didn't stand, go to your caves. When this fight is over, you can come out. And you can begin again. But you need to move into your caves. Get into your places of safety. For behold, the lion comes. Then he says this, O ye judges that write opinions. He said, let it be known to all that they are just that, opinions. Then he said this, talking to the to all the wicked, said, you have no idea what you've done. Now the weather will fight more than ever. Then he says, if you're God's people, every time you hear of impending disaster in weather, identify yourself to it, that you belong to the Lord Jesus. Identify yourself so that it may pass over. For things are about to heat up. And the Lord had told me not long ago, he said, the time of the lion will come when you hear the wind that's coming. They started reporting to me yesterday the possibility of all these high winds that are about to happen. Folks, he's coming. And he's coming to bring revival. I was talking to a friend of mine. And I remember the prophecy of C.S. Lewis. People say, did he give a prophecy? Yes. They made it into a whole book and then a whole movie. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And in that prophecy, the lion was coming. He was coming. And in that prophecy, wicked people had taken over the land. I want you to listen to it. Wicked people had taken over the land. And they had taken those who spoke the truth and turned them to stone. And the lion was coming. The creation knew he was coming. And I remember how in that prophecy, Christmas declared he was coming. That was the one thing they couldn't stop. Said he's coming. And when he finally came and he arrived, he went straight to where the people were turned to stone and breathed on them. He breathed on them 
and they came to life. They woke up. So when this lion, when the lion comes this time, he's bringing a great awakening among the people. He's going to trample the wicked and bring the awakening to his body. And there's going to be the greatest revival you have ever seen. And believe it or not, the enemy wants to stop that revival from coming. And he's willing to kill seven billion to get it done. But there's coming an awakening, but it takes the lion to breathe on those to wake them up. The eyes of the eagle see, but the teeth of the lion fights. And so the lion is coming, and there's about to be an awakening in the earth, a great awakening, and nothing will stop it. False prophets and false people that sowed for their own demise, planted their own seed. Now there will be an accident. The world will call it an accident. And it will end that for now. Yes, the day will come when the tribulation period will come. The day will come when all of that will take place, but this is not that day. See, not only has there got to be a great awakening, but there also has to be, now listen close, there also has to be a wealth transfer. Now, why does it so important that there's a wealth transfer? And why would the devil want to overthrow all of this and bring it into power before the wealth transfer can happen? Because if it, if it happens, he has to begin the tribulation broke. Now, I'll say that again. I don't know who heard that. But if, if the wealth transfer comes in, then all of the wealth is turned over to God's people. If he can get the great tribulation in before the transfer, he keeps all the wealth. If he can't stop it from being transferred, then the Lord catches his people out. He has to begin the seven-year tribulation broke. And without money in this earth and without wealth, there is no power. And he would have to begin it broke. And you know he's going to begin it broke because then he has to have people marked, shortages, buying and selling so he can control the wealth. And it's amazing, isn't it, that the WEF is all the economic forum where the false prophets are speaking from. Bill Gates is talking about reducing all the population now. Jane Goodall is saying reduce the population to 500 million. And Harari, their prophet, says we don't even need them. He said humans don't contribute to much. He said this. He said they don't contribute to anything except data. He said that except data. He must get his hands on that wealth. But he's not. And I, for one, prophet, will stand here and speak the prophetic word. The lion is coming. The justice will prevail. Everything is on its way to changing. There will be a wealth transfer. And we're going to see the great revival where a billion souls are saved. And I decree and declare that the Antichrist will have to start his tribulation period broke. In Jesus' name. And so I want Krista to come now and tell you how God wants you to prosper. It is his will that you control the wealth. And I want to tell you something. You do matter. You do matter. You're a unique spirit before God. 
in his image, in his likeness. You're a speaking spirit like God. There's gifts and talents on the inside of each and every one of you that the enemy would, would tremble if they came forward. This is why he tries to kill babies before they can be born. He wants to stop everything. They're trying to reduce humanity down to nothing, to just a very handful of people so he can kill all these gifts and, and, and things that could stop him. But you do matter. And start standing up and declaring, I will fulfill my destiny. I will fulfill what God called me to do. And there's no devil in hell big enough to stop me from walking into my destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Krista. Praise God. Well, we want to give you the opportunity to sow today. And so if you would like to do that, the ways that you can give are on the screen. And also, if you don't catch that, you can always go to robindbullock.com and find all the ways to give there. I, I want to read something to you real quick. You know, in the scripture, uh, Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11, it says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Yesterday, I started, uh, we, we were quoting that scripture, and I, I started uh, pondering that scripture. And, and Austin said something that triggered a, another revelation. And, and all of a sudden, it, it just, it was like light bulb. You know, the word has so many, you know, as mom said Sunday, it, it's, in, it's in three levels, you know, because we're, we're a triune being. God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, everything, the Trinity. So the Word is in three parts. So one person's revelation could be different than somebody else's revelation concerning a scripture, and the Lord can show different things. Well, he showed me, he said, what's under the earth? What goes under the earth? And the Lord showed Austin something, but he showed me this. He said, what goes under the earth? I said, seeds. Seeds go under the earth. You plant them in the ground. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said that us as believers, we need to start telling those spirits that are trying to grasp hold of our seed up underneath the ground to let it go and to bow its knee to the name of Jesus, to release your seed, because you know what? A lot of you should already have your good harvest by now. You should have it. It should be up. But there's some spirit under the ground trying to hold on to that seed so that you can't that you can't receive your harvest so that it doesn't produce so today you have your scripture Philippians 2 9 10 and 11 of things under the earth to let your seed go to bow its knee to let it go that way you can have your harvest and that there's no demon in hell that is big enough to withstand the name of Jesus and that the enemy is like he said he wants you to go broke he wants you to be broke and so he's doing everything he can. And you know what? It may be a situation where there's something in your life that could be trying to hold that back. So you need to today do some self, self-examining and, and, and think, is there something in my life that could be holding this back? You tell that to bow its knee. And then once all that repent of it created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. And then all of a sudden tell that demon of hell that's got a hold of your seed up underneath the ground to bow its knee to the name of Jesus. And let your seed go. Because we have a, an end time revival. We have an end time war that we we need the fund we, you know we've got people that we need to fund uh, ourselves you know different people different uh different ministers different ministries different different things that we all need to work together and start sowing into each other to get the gospel out there you go places i don't go i go places you don't go and so we've got to start helping each other and funding this gospel so that the gospel can be preached to the ends of the earth and if it's by 
my live stream, if it's just like this, then it takes money to keep all this running. It takes money. It takes money for you to pull this up on your phone right now. You don't, you don't go watch this for free. Are you kidding me? Your TV, your Wi-Fi that produces the channel on your TV is not free. It's not free. Your phone, it takes money to pay the bill to keep your phone on. Well, I don't have data. Well, there's Wi-Fi running it somewhere. And it took money to keep that going. So today, we need, I, you know, maybe that'll sink in today. But the Lord spoke that to me yesterday. He said, a seed is under the earth. A seed of things under the earth. Things. Thing. A seed is a thing. And it's under the earth. And whatever's got a hold of your seed, tell it to bow its knee today. And let your seed go. Because you've got a harvest crying for you. Amen. Amen. Well, today, I want to pray over you as you give your seed today. Father, I thank you for this 11th hour family that is watching today. I thank you for their boldness, Lord, to speak up, Lord, to spread your word, to spread the truth. Father, and I thank you, Lord, that, that we're all in this together, that we're a team. I thank you for the team that we have on our side. I thank you, Lord, for all my brothers and sisters on the other side of this camera. Lord, I, I thank you for their heart for you. Father, I thank Thank you, Lord, that what you promised in their life is going to come to pass and that they will see it before the end of the year, that we will get testimony after testimony after testimony, that, that financial miracles happen before the end of the year, restoration in marriages and families happen before the end of this year, new homes were gotten by the end of this year, new vehicles were gotten, what, whatever that they're believing for, Lord, that we will receive these testimonies of miracles that have happened in their life from putting your word into action. And Lord, I pray right now your word, Luke 6, 38 over them, that as they give, it is given unto them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto their bosom. For with the same measure that they meet with all, it shall be measured to them again. Lord, I believe it, and you say, I receive it. It, and we call it done in Jesus' name. Now for the tither, Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. I believe it, I receive it, I call it done, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Krista. Yeah, I was standing over there listening to her teaching. That's awesome. There's a power under the ground, and there is a holding down a seed. Philippians 2, 9, 10, 11 said, Jesus has been given a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So there is a power under the ground holding down your harvest, and the glory has to be released in it. When the glory goes underground, resurrection happens. Hallelujah. And I was standing over there listening to her teach about this, and then Robin called me over to her and said, I heard these words. She said, illusion, collusion. Yeah, that's awesome. That's the real collusion. Illusion, collusion. People have colluded in the illusion. They've colluded to bring this illusion to the world. <clears throat> you know, I wasn't sure how, but, but we, we brought that to you today the best I could in, in this time. It'll get easier to say the more I say it. But I wanted you to see starving in the land of abundance is only because there's illusion collusion. 
and and they have co they have uh, colluded together to perpetrate this illusion around the world, and now it is it has really become men's perception, and now they got this you know uh, banana eating disease that's out there, and you know what I'm talking about when I say that. Uh, I got to talk in code or they, they'll stop it, you know. You know, Tarzan had a little pet friend. and Remember what he was? Well, there's something there. Now they're trying to do this, and they're trying to collude on that now. They're trying to do all of this stuff, and it's all to do one thing. They must bring this about while the wealth is still in the hands of the wicked. That's what they're after. Because as soon as the wealth changes hands, there is no more funding for technology <laughs> to do that. It just won't be any more. And they asked this, they asked this false prophet, they said, what are you, uh, you going to do with the rest of the people until all this comes about, whatever you're going to do? And they said something to that effect. And they said, what are you going to do with everybody else? He said, well, we'll just keep them occupied with cell phones and video games. So that's why there's so many flooding people's minds. And people can't walk around without doing this with their phone. They cross streets with cars coming like this with their phone. <clears throat> they look up just in time, and some don't make it in time. They run into something, being kept occupied while they do what they're going to do. Amen. And now we have, you know, churches are attacking prophets. And, oh, my Lord. And there's a real false prophet sitting on the air talking about killing off humans. And the governments are supporting him. My God, people. He don't call you anything. He calls you humans. Amen. Well, it's been a good 11th hour today. It's been a different 11th hour today. It's been a wide open 11th hour today and a bold 11th hour today. And so I want you to know our partners and, and family and friends all around the world, keep standing with us because I've got some things in my thinking that I'm, I'm really praying into that we're going, we may be doing, and if we do, it will really stir up something. It's going to stir things up. You know, people are already wondering, how much more can we stir it up? Well, sometimes the pool just has to be stirred up. It just has to, all something has to be stirred up, man, for people to see. Amen. Well, until next time. No, we got praise reports. Well, come quickly then. I, I, see, I, I remembered it quicker this time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We did have a few come in uh, last week via email. One says, um, I just received two checks in the mail. This is a partner. Unexpected resources from unexpected places. One check is for $16,860, and another was for $150. Both checks state that mistakes were made to the bank accounts uh, that I used to have that were over 12 years old. I don't even have the account numbers anymore to double check because I no longer have a bank account with this particular bank. I'm a proud partner, and yesterday and early this morning, the Holy Spirit prompted me to call forth lost monies, stolen inheritances, land, property, etc., and I did, and the checks arrived this morning. So praise God for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another one we have says... The AC goes out uh, in and out on my truck all the time, but for the last couple of days, the temperature gauge has been stuck so the AC would not come on at all. After church, I was on my way home, and I started to pray again for my AC, and this is a partner with the 11th hour. I reminded God that he said he, would, he, was, uh, he was a father and a husband to me, and if my dad was here, my dad's in heaven, he would fix my car. And if I had a husband, he would fix my car. So I expected the Lord to fix my car. The temperature gauge immediately jumped up, and my AC came on. It's been working ever since, and I give all the glory to God the Father. So, hallelujah, hallelujah. Send your praise reports into robindbullock.com so that we can rejoice with our 11th hour family. Amen. Amen. Now, see, that shows you 
what he, how the Lord thinks you matter just on something as simple as an air conditioning in a car. And they say, this Harari guy says, you don't really matter. Humans don't really matter. The Lord thinks you matter so much that he fixed the air conditioning for one person. I remember a, a lady that I, I knew, Robin and I knew years ago, and uh, she was a widow, and her plumbing quit working in her house. And she said, now, Lord, you said that you were a husband to the widow. Said, now, if Mr. So-and-so was here, he would fix the plumbing. And I expect you to fix the plumbing. And she thought that a plumber would come by or somebody would come by. But she just heard this, this chink, chink, like pipes hitting together. And God just fixed the plumbing. Right there in her house, just fixed the plumbing. Now, he thinks you matter. <clears throat> he thinks your children matters, and he thinks everything about you matters, and so do we. Amen. So take courage. Uh, pray for us. I pray for you every day. I was praying over you last night. I'll be praying over you tonight. And so pray for us that God will give us boldness and utterance and open doors. Hallelujah. We're praying for, a, for, for bigger voices, for a bigger voice for more places to be. I want to be able to come to other countries personally. I'd like to bring a team and come there wherever the Lord would open the door. I would really like for us to, to be able to look at you in the face and, and, and minister with you and to you and, and raise a sound together wherever you are, wherever we are. Hallelujah. Well, until next time we gather together, right here around God's Word. I want you to remember, never forget that God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm.